that. So, Peter Mugai, when and where were you born? I was born at Independence in a place called Bahati in Nakuru County. And where did you go to school? I went to school at Bavuni Primary School. Then I joined the Kenyatta Secondary in Nakuru Town before joining uh, Nakuru High School for my A-levels and then went on to become a writer. Really? Did you have any, did you have any training for being a creative writer? No, no, not really. I attempted to write a book. I remember during my school days, there's a book that I wrote uh, titled No More Whispers. In the course of uh, going, going uh, here and there to have it printed, I met with uh, some journalists who introduced me into a nation media group and the standard. So I was inducted as a journalist. N never went to train in anywhere. Have you ever been employed? Of course, I worked for Standard Newspaper as a, as a reporter in Nakuru, Molo, Nyeri, Nairobi, Nyahururu and other places before I joined the Nation Newspaper where I, I, I was posted in Naivasha for, for many years between 1997 to 2013. And what inspired you to write the Eagles of Menengai Crete? Well, as a young boy, I grew up uh, during uh, Kenya's post-independence period, uh, mostly in uh, emergency villages. So, you know, after Kenya got independence, uh, my parents were staying within uh, white settler farms, whereby they were working in uh, plantations like coffee and pyrethrum. So during my young days, I used to join my parents in, uh, in, in working in those farms, and I could see how they were struggling to make ends meet. So it is that, that kind of experience that inspired me to write Eagles of Menengai Krita, whereby I'm going down memory lane uh, to reflect on what I used to experience during my young days. And have you written any other books? Yeah, I have published other books. The, the, the second book I've published is titled uh, Starting Afresh. The other one is uh, In the Castle of My Heart, which is a collection of short stories. I've also written another one, a collection of poems known as The High Seas and a collection of essays known as uh, Starting Afresh. And what are you currently working on? I'm currently working on a documentary based on my novel, Eagles of Menengai Crater, and uh, I hope it will entertain and inform, especially the young generations who never experienced post-independence period, who have only read about settlers on, on history books, and uh, maybe they would like to go through what their parents went through when they were growing up. The young generation actually has to be uh, told about what, what, what took place during and after independence. As a young boy in post-independence Kenya, I used to be fascinated by a portrait that hung in security on the mud wall of our thatched house. Though I had not learned how to read and write, I kept staring indifferently at the inscription, wondering what it was all about. One day, I pleaded with my mother to read for me the message on the buffering, the picture that was suspended by a nylon string, like a pedant, at times seesawing like a pedulum. It was written in capital letters. Christ is the head of this house, the unseen guest in every meal, the silent listener to every conversation. Since it was a single room, I, more often than not, stared at the fixated portrait. I remember one Sunday morning when mom summoned me into the beloved hut, where she requested me to sit on a small wooden stool and that I pay attention. She keenly looked at the grilling expos that for the tenth time oscillated spasmodically as if to register its everlasting presence. Mom used a dry mistop to point at each word before endeavoring to read. She intermittently paused to let it sink and perhaps re-energize. I don't recall asking my mother questions or wanting to know the veiled meaning of the mysterious lettering. Mom had a special connection with the portlet. Whenever we relocated to a different mud house, she would lap it carefully in an old piece of cloth that was seemingly kept for this purpose. In those days, we lived a Spartan life that was characterized by ceaseless movement. The first thing my mother did whenever we arrived in a new residence was to sweep the floor of the house. She would then carefully hang the sacrosanct portlet on its mud wall before reading us in an inordinately prolonged prayer, in which she routinely sought divine intervention from heaven.